Hello everyone, in this lecture we will discuss about arrays in Java. So let's start. An array is a group of like typed variables that are referred to by a common name. Arrays of any type can be created, may have one or more dimensions. A specific element in an array is accessed by its index. Be careful. If you are familiar with C and C++, arrays in Java work differently than they do in those languages. A one-dimensional array is essentially a list of like-typed variables. To create an array, you first must create an array variables of the desired type. So here you can see on screen type where name array bracket this is declares an array here type declares the element type also called the base type of the array the element type determines the data type of each element that comprises the array although this declaration establishes the fact that days is an array variable no array actually exists so to link days with an actually physical array of integer you must allocate one using new and assign it to days so new is a special operator that allocate memory so here you can see on uh, screen int days array bracket it is a declaration and days equal to new int in array bracket 5 this is the size of array and new that is used new to allocate an array you must specify the type and number of elements to allocate in this allocate 5 element array of integer and links them to days the elements in the array allocated by new will automatically be initialized to 0 for numeric types false for boolean types and null for reference types so hello everyone in practical session we will discuss about array int days you can see this is the first statement int days it declares an array of days and second statement days equal to new int 12 the size of array is 12 and new operator is using here for allocation memory so next some statements initialize an array from 0 index to 11 index when we run this program it prints the number of days in september java arrays indexes start with 0 so the number of days in september at index 8 so let's run this program and go to cmd now so let's execute this program with the help of java c now run this with the help of java interpreter So September has 30 days. This is the output of our program. So let's review. Obtaining an array is a two-step process. So let's see. So first, you must declare a variable of the desired array type. And second, you must allocate the memory that will hold the arrays using new and assign it to the array variable so in java all arrays are dynamically allocated once you have allocated an array you can access specific element in the array by specifying its index within square brackets so it is improved version of the previous program let's run this program we will see the same output as that generated by the previous program java strictly check to make sure you do not accidentally try to store or reference values outside the range of the array 
so the java runtime system will check to be sure that all array indexes are in the correct range so let's run this program program executed successfully now let's run it with the help of so you can see same output as previous program so in this program the runtime system will check the value of each index into days to make sure that it is between 0 and 11 inclusive if you try to access elements outside the range of the array negative numbers or number greater than the length of the array you will cause a runtime error so it is possible to combine the declaration of the array variable with the allocation of the array itself as shown on the screen int days array bracket equal to new int size of array is 12 so as shown on screen Uh, second statement int days array bracket equal to opening curly brace with some values uh, comma separated so the arrays can be initialized when they are declared the process is much the same as the used to initialize the simple types actually the commas separated the values of the array elements the array will automatically be created large enough to hold the number of elements you specify in the array initializer so there is no need to use new so in java multi dimensional arrays are actually arrays of arrays so declare a multi dimensional array variable specify each additional index using another set of square brackets you can see on screen declares a two dimensional array variable called td so this is the syntax of two dimensional array you are seeing on screen so in this this allocates a 3 by 3 array and assign it to t, uh, td initially this matrix is implemented as an array of arrays of int conceptually this array will look like the one shown on screen you are seeing on screen it is two dimensional array in td double square bracket equal to new int in first array bracket 3 and second index is also 3 so left index determines row and right index determines column so in this program two dimensional array td is declared and memory allocated in same statement this program numbers each elements in the array from left to right top to bottom and then display the output so let's check the output of this program so you can see the output of the array and uh, two dimensional array on screen so alternative array declaration there is a second form that may be used to declare an array you can see on uh, screen like type and uh, square bracket and where name with semicolon so here the square bracket follows the type specifier and not the name of the array variable so this is the second form you can use this form alternative array declaration the, the two declaration see on screen are equivalent first two declaration and second two declaration are two dimensional arrays are also equivalent the this alternative declaration form offer convenience when declaring several arrays at the same time as you can see on the bottom of the screen int square bracket uh, n comma n2 comma n3 with semicolon 
creates three array variable of type int hello everyone last lecture i had asked a question what is auto widening and explicit narrowing the answer is the data is implicitly casted from small sized primitive type to big sized primitive type this is called auto widening for example the data is automatically casted from byte to short short to int int to long and long to float and float to double and uh, you have to explicitly cast the data from big sized primitive type to small sized primitive type for example you have to explicitly convert the data from double to float float to long long to int into short short to byte this is called explicit narrowing so today question is can you change the size of the array and you to find it please give the answer in comment section otherwise i will tell you in the next lecture so i hope you enjoyed this lecture i'll see you in the next lecture